Howdy with uh, this video number four for Thursday, March 25th. Want to go over sentence diagramming, everybody's favorite activity. Uh, actually, actually, this should be kind of a fun activity. It kind of, it's a way to apply what we've been learning with parts of speech and with fragments and comma splices and stuff. Uh, and kind of start to notice a couple of things. One, that when we talk about fragments or comma splices or run-ons, uh, these aren't just random rules English teachers came up with. Uh, these are errors that kind of cause problems when the reader goes to try to understand what you're saying. And diagramming helps you kind of see where sentences can kind of go wrong if you don't have all the correct components uh, that the reader is expecting to see within a sentence. Uh, two, it's also just fun to kind of see how sentences are constructed, how the different parts of speech work within a sentence, and just kind of have a visual of that and kind of see that, yeah, there's a logical pattern to all this. Uh, make sure you have your sentence diagramming exercise. You should probably have the answers, but try not to look at those until you try the exercise. And kind of just um, hang with me as we go over a couple of ideas here with sentence diagramming. Uh, with sentence diagramming, uh, what they want you to do is separate uh, the subject and the predicate in the sentence. So with just a real basic sentence like you have in the first question or the first uh, exercise, uh, you're going to put the, the subject on the left side of that vertical line. And you're going to put the predicate or the verb on the right side of that vertical line. And that separates the two out. And every complete sentence should have a subject and a predicate, a noun and a verb, uh, within that sentence. And that's just a, the most, about as basic as you can get with the sentence diagramming here. Just the noun on the left of the vertical line, the verb on the right of the vertical line. When we start adding modifiers, uh, adjectives or adverbs or prepositional phrases, uh, we're going to start putting those underneath the word it modifies. So let me go back here. So uh, we just add slowly here. And we're going to see that when you diagram, uh, you take that adverb. Uh, it's telling us how Susan writes it. And generally, if it's an LY word, it's gonna, probably going to be an adverb. Uh, but you have that uh, diagonal line there. Uh, underneath the word rights because slowly modifies rights. Uh, and that's what you're going to do with adjectives and adverbs. You want to put them uh, under the word they modify. I don't know why I keep trying to click over there. Uh, so if we want to modify Susan somehow, like this is actually smart. Uh, smart is an adjective modifying the noun Susan. So smart's going to go under Susan uh, and the verb. Uh, I mean, uh, the adverb slowly is modifying the verb rights. Uh, and that's kind of how diagramming works. You want to separate the subject and predicate, that main noun and the, and the main verb, and then put all the modifiers underneath that. Uh, when you start getting into direct objects and indirect objects and, and things like that, uh, things get very complicated. We're not going to go that far with diagramming. This wants you to kind of see some of the basics and how sentences are constructed and how these parts of speech kind of come into play. Uh, let's go ahead and add a prepositional phrase here. Let's say she writes slowly on the computer. And that uh, prepositional phrase, uh, don't forget a prepositional phrase starts with a preposition. Here, this one's on. Uh, that links the noun to the rest of the sentence. So the uh, on's the preposition, computer's a noun, and thus just an adjective an article functioning as an adjective there. Uh, so for prepositional phrases, uh, on the diagonal part of the, this line here, you're going to write the preposition. Then on the horizontal line, uh, you're going to write the noun. And then, again, uh, thus just an adjective uh, modifying com the computer there. So uh, that's why the is underneath the computer. Uh, if we change that sense to just say computers, then though just wouldn't be there. But again, uh, smart's an adjective modifying the noun Susan, slowly is an adverb modifying rights, and on computers, or on the computers from the previous one, is a prepositional phrase functioning as an adverb in a sentence. It's modifying the verb, so that's why it's underneath the verb over there. Uh, and prepositions, oh, prepositional, prepositional phrases can go uh, 
you know, it's, it's sometimes they're adjectives, sometimes they're adverbs, uh, but in this case, it's an adverb uh, modifying rights. Um, and that's kind of, but that's kind of the basics right there. I want to show you a couple more things. Uh, when you have uh, a conjunction bill, and it's going to change our verb there, isn't it? I don't know why I'm not having the in there bothers me, but uh, we have Smart Susan and Quick Bill write slowly on the computer. So with and we have a conjunction, uh, so we have two two uh, two nouns as a subject in the sentence. Uh, so the, we're going to have to show that in our diagramming. And if you look at uh, question number five, uh, you have that uh, kind of going on there. Can I move it? Oh, I can't. That's as big as I can get it. Um, but for the conjunction, when you have two uh, two nouns as a subject in sentence, Susan and Bill. So you have this little, uh, I don't know, it's kind of an arrow looking thing here. Uh, then a dotted line uh, going up, going vertically. Uh, then you're just going to put your uh, at your conjunction there, that and. So we have smart Susan. Uh, again, smart is an adjective modifying Susan. Uh, quick is the ad, uh, adjective modifying Bill. Uh, then you have the conjunction linking these two together because they're both functioning. They're, together they form the subject of the sentence. Uh, so I guess it's getting a little complicated on that subject side of the vertical the vertical line there, right? Um, but of course, then over here we still have right, uh, then the adverb slowly, then the preposition, prepositional phrase functioning as an adverb uh, on the computer, uh, all underneath right there. Uh, so hopefully you kind of start seeing, wow, this gets one it could get very complicated, uh, but two it's kind of interesting to see sentences kind of mapped out in a logical pattern. Uh, to show you what happens if you don't have a complete sentence, uh, let's just, let's say you have a. Well, I, can just, I need to erase it. I'm kind of new to this program, so bear with me. So, if you have a fragment, the odds are it's going to say you can't diagram it right. Uh, you don't have a full sentence. You don't have a subject and a predicate functioning within that, uh, what, what you're trying to call a sentence there. Uh, and it's just not going to be able to, you're not going to be able to diagram it. Uh, same thing uh, sometimes with, she writes, he talks, I don't know. Um, here we have a run-on sentence. And my guess is it's not going to diagram it. Uh, because you don't have a conjunction there, or you need a period between these two sentences, you need something uh, to correct that run-on sentence. Yep, cannot diagram it. Uh, looking up here on the top right, uh, and that's going to—that's one th kind of interesting thing that uh, sentence diagramming shows you is that if you don't have the subject and the predicate in the sentence, you're not going to have a complete sentence, and you're going to run into some problems there. <clears throat> um. So give it a give it a shot. Uh, be careful of if, with interjections. Uh, interjections don't function within a sentence. Uh, they don't really serve a purpose in a sentence other than to go like, "ow" or "wow" or whatever. Uh, that's not really part of the sentence. So they might be they're going to be diagrammed a little differently. You'll see that in number six there, uh, where you try to figure out where "wow" goes. Um, but kind of give this one the old college try, uh, and kind of once you kind of diagram. I kind of think back to the fragments and comma splices and kind of understand that you can't diagram those because something's missing or something's not quite right about that sentence. And you're not meeting the pattern that readers are expecting uh, when you write. Uh, but try and have a little fun with it. Uh, again, uh, you know, if, you, if, you, if it doesn't quite click for you, people lead perfectly happy lives not knowing how to diagram sentences. <laughs> or at least that's what I'm told. Uh, if you get into sentence diagramming, uh, they write until again they write entire books about it, uh, and you can get on into all the complications of uh, the English language. Uh, but hopefully that's kind of fun. Um, if you get done a little bit early and you need to go back and finish some exercises in the grammar workbook, uh, hopefully I gave you enough time for that uh, on Wednesday. But uh, I'll go ahead and do that. But otherwise, we'll talk to you later. Alrighty, trying to figure out how to get out of this. Uh, but we'll talk to you later. Bye bye.